I'm going to explain why hot water freezes faster than cold water. This is something that is fairly counterintuitive when we think about the process something has to go through to freeze. It has to get cold, and so if we have some water that is already a little colder, how could that water possibly take more time to freeze than some water that's hot? But we know from experimentation that hot water actually does freeze faster. So I'm going to discuss this a little bit and hopefully we can reveal what's happening. At the end of my discussion, I'm also going to suggest some experiments that can prove a little bit more definitively uh, whether this is actually what's going on or not. So basically what's happening is when the water uh, reaches the temperature necessary to start the process of freezing, the water that used to be hot is not exactly like the water that was not quite as hot. The difference is the water that used to be hot has some residual momentum in the direction of expansion, which is a result of, of the fact that it was hot. This momentum in the direction of expansion lowers the activation energy necessary for the water to become ice. Basically, there's two things that have to happen in this process that take some period of time. One is the water has to go from the temperature uh, which we started at to the temperature necessary to, to start to become ice. The second thing is the water uh, has to actually, the, the molecules in the water have to go through a change in position so that they are in the conformation associated with ice rather than the conformation associated with water. The water that starts out a little bit colder will reach the temperature necessary to become ice faster but the water that started out hotter will actually completely solidify and become ice first. So I'm going to explain how uh, two liquids at different temperatures can have, or at the same temperature rather, can have different momentums associated with them. I'm going to explain how uh, the water that used to be hot has this momentum in the direction of expansion as a result of being hot and I'm going to explain why that makes it easier for the water to transform into ice, uh, which allows it to happen faster. So first let's talk about the heat and what the heat actually means. If we have a liquid, uh, what it means if the liquid is hot is that the molecules, the individual particles in the liquid, have more kinetic energy associated with them. That is, they have more movement in, in a seemingly random direction. So I've drawn a vessel here with some water in it, and just to illustrate, I've drawn uh, one particle. There are actually lots and lots of particles, but the more, or, or the higher the temperature of this water, the more movement this particle will have associated, associated with it in some random direction. And although the direction of the movement is random initially, it will not uh, remain completely random in this sense. If this particle were to move uh, in any other direction except towards the direction of free space, then it's likely to have a collision either with another particle because the density of particles at the center of the mass is greater uh, than towards the direction of free space or perhaps the wall, in which case it would be redirected. So these particles that, that are near the surface of the water are ultimately going to have a tendency to expand as a result of collisions uh, that happen either with the wall or with other particles. And what's going to happen is this particle can travel a little bit longer in this direction of expansion than it can in any other direction. So after the system has uh, been hot for a little bit, what we're going to have is more particles are going to be moving in the direction of expansion that are moving in any other direction. So if we want to think about the momentum of this system, the momentum is going to have two components, the speed of the particles and the number of particles moving in one direction as opposed to another direction. I've written a formula here for momentum. Momentum equals mass times velocity, uh, but for this system, mass is the number of particles moving in one direction versus the number of particles moving in another direction if we want to think about uh, which 
way the overall momentum is going. So, if we decrease the temperature in this system quickly enough, we will decrease the speed of the individual particles instantaneously because that is the temperature. That's what temperature means, how fast the particles are moving. However, there will still be more particles moving in this direction of expansion than there are moving any other direction uh, if we cool it quickly enough. So, it's important to realize that, that this uh, property by which more particles are going to be moving in this direction of expansion more than any other direction is sort of time delayed in terms of the temperature. The temperature is the amount of movement. The amount of movement leads to the number of collisions, and the number of collisions leads to the number of particles moving in the direction of expansion. So why does this make it easier for the water to actually solidify completely and become ice? Well, that's related to another really unique property of water. Water is actually more dense in the liquid form and less dense as ice. Most other things are not this way. Um, most other liquids we know about are actually more dense in the solid form, but because of the hydrogen bonding associated with water, it's actually able to be less dense as ice. So if we think about what density means, if something's more dense, that means particles are closer together. And if something's less dense, that means the particles are farther apart. Uh, this should all be pretty intuitive because if we have some water in a vessel and we put it in a freezer, then it expands. The ice, the volume of the ice is greater than the, the volume of water we have. And I've drawn a depiction of, of water and ice here just to illustrate the different densities there. Particles are uh, have hydrogen bonds between them that are holding them together, and then they have movement, which is uh, pushing them apart. But the, the energy necessary for the water to solidify and become ice, the activation energy required for that to happen, is essentially the energy required for a particle to go from this relative position to the other particle to this relative position. It is the energy required for the system to expand. So if we, have a, uh, if we have water that used to be hot and already has some momentum in the direction of expansion, this energy required is going to be less. Just to give an example of how this works, it might make it a little bit more clear. on a depiction of something similar that happens in mechanics. If we had a situation where uh, we had a person that had to run a certain distance, and then at the end of running that certain distance, he had to push in a spring that was difficult to push in. And we had another person who had to run a shorter distance and also push in a spring that was difficult to push in think about what's happening here, the person that has to run the shorter distance is going to get there first, if they, assuming they run the same speed. However, the person that has to run a little bit farther will be able to push the spring in faster if he can use the momentum he gained by running the distance to help push in the spring. In my analogy here, the distance the person has to run is analogous to uh, the the temperature drop required in the system. The hot water has a larger temperature differential. The cold water has a smaller temperature differential. However, this momentum will allow the person that runs the, the longer distance, in my example, to push in the spring first. The pushing in of the spring is analogous to uh, the activation energy required for water to actually solidify and become ice. So there's a couple things we could do if we want to find out whether this is actually what's happening. Uh, one thing we could do is we could try to recreate this effect with another liquid besides water, which is not less dense as a solid. If we could not recreate this with, for example, alcohol, then it is almost surely related to this unique property of water, 
where it is where it is less dense as a solid. Another thing we could do is manipulate the shape of our vessel. When I was talking about the expansion being in the direction of free space over here, that assumes that there is some free space. If the uh, interchange between the liquid and say air were not uh, large as in this example, but were maybe a little bit smaller, we're going to have less conserve momentum in that direction of expansion because here we have more collisions with the sides redirecting inward and so in a vessel that looks like this the hot water should not be as apt to freeze more quickly hopefully some of that made a little sense thank you very much for watching